Hello students, welcome once again to Kim is Try. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please click on the subscribe button below. Today we want to talk about the uses of standard electrode potential values. In our previous video, we spoke about the standard electrode potential values and we said that they are a measure of how easy it is for a substance to lose or a substance to gain electrons. We said also that the standard electrode potential values of the elements are always given to us as standard reduction potential values. As such, in their abbreviated form, you will see a shorthand for a reduction reaction. Then you will be given the value in volts. We also establish the fact that the more positive the standard reduction potential value, the easier it is for the substance to undergo reduction. And the less positive the standard reduction potential value, the easier it is for the substance to undergo oxidation. We also realize that whenever we have a galvanic or a voltaic cell, the total EMF of the cell is given as the difference in the standard reduction potential value of the cathode and the standard reduction potential value of the anode. Why do we bother ourselves measuring the standard electrode potential values? What, what is the essence? Today, we are here to talk about the uses of the standard electrode potential values. The first use we are going to talk about is, it is used to calculate the EMF of a cell. It is used to calculate the EMF of a cell. Let's look at an example of a question that will help us to know how these standard reduction potential values are used to calculate the EMF of a whole galvanic cell. In our example, we have been given the standard reduction potential value of zinc half cell to be negative 0.76 volts the standard reduction potential value of aluminum half cell to be equal to negative 1.66 volts. From these two values, our question is, we are supposed to construct a feasible electrochemical cell with these two electrodes and calculate the EMF of the whole galvanic cell we are going to construct. So we'll be doing two things. The zinc half cell, the aluminum half cell. We are going to use these two half cells to construct a feasible electrochemical cell. Then after doing that, based on the standard reduction potential values, we are going to calculate the total EMF the cell is supposed to give us. To perform this operation, we have to isolate our half cells. And based on the half cells we have, we will pick which one is the reduction half cell and which one is the oxidation half cell. Let's start with that. So the first half cell is the zinc 2 and the zinc Couple, huh? The first one is the zinc half cell and it has a standard reduction potential value of negative 0.76 volts. Then we also have the aluminum half cell. That one too has a standard reduction potential value of negative 1.66 volts. 
From this information, we can identify which one will undergo oxidation and which one can undergo reduction. Remember, the more positive the standard reduction potential value, the easier it is for the substance to undergo reduction. And the less positive the standard reduction potential value, the easier it is for the substance to undergo oxidation. So let's look at the values. We have negative 0 0.76 volts and we have negative 1.66 volts. Obviously, this one has a less negative value, which means it is approaching positive value than this one. Do you see it? So this one has a less negative value, which means it has a more positive standard re reduction potential value. So this one will undergo reduction. Now the aluminum half cell has a more negative standard reduction potential value. So it will undergo oxidation. That is one way of identifying it. There is another way. By the use of the electrochemical series. Remember in our previous video, we had a chart talking about the standard reduction potential values of the various elements correctly arranged. In that chart, we said that the ones that are higher up with more negative standard reduction potential values can easily undergo oxidation. The ones below have their values gearing towards a positive value and some of them even having more positive values. They would undergo reduction. So I have a small chart of not all the elements do, but some of the elements, the key elements you'll be normally asked to use to construct a feasible electrochemical cell arranged according to their standard reduction potential values. Let's see if there's a simple way for us to memorize this. Over here, we have a simple way to memorize the electrochemical series of some of the elements, some key elements. Linda. Linda has been calling me a zombie, eh? Meanwhile, she has a job she has to do. So I'm going to tell Linda. Linda, please stop calling me a zombie. Instead, now, try learning how copper saves gold. Linda, please stop calling me a zombie. Instead, now, try learning how copper saves gold. These first letters represent the names of the elements. So Linda starts with L, eh? So lithium. Please, potassium. Stop, sodium. Calling, calcium, and so on. But we have to do a little adjustment with our series. Very little. What we are going to do is, we are going to change the positions of the sodium and the calcium to make the electrochemical series complete. So sodium will now take calcium's position, then calcium will take sodium's position. So this part becomes calcium, and that part becomes sodium. Now this. becomes our correct arrangement for the electrochemical series. Did you notice it? We just use this simple approach. Linda, please stop calling me a zombie. Instead, now, try learning how copper saves gold. Then we are going to use the first letters to write the respective elements. Lithium, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, nickel, tin, lead, hydrogen, copper, silver, and gold. 
Then we do a last thing. You write down their chemical symbols. Then swap the positions of sodium and calcium. We should be done with our electrochemical series. And we can use this one to identify which of the substances is going to undergo oxidation and which one will undergo reduction. Simple. The ones up are the ones that can easily undergo oxidation. The ones down are the ones that can easily undergo reduction. So if I have a galvanic cell which is made up of calcium and iron, Calcium is above iron in the series. Therefore, calcium will undergo oxidation. Then iron will undergo reduction. So from our example we have been given, we were given aluminium and zinc. So let's try and locate aluminium and zinc from our electrochemical series. Huh? So that is aluminium. That is zinc. Wow. Aluminium is just above zinc in the electrochemical series, telling us that when these two meet, since aluminium is higher, it will undergo oxidation. It will lose electrons easily. Then zinc, which is below aluminium, will then gain the electrons and become reduced. So without considering the standard reduction potential values, we could also use this chart to determine which of the two substances will undergo oxidation and which one will undergo reduction. And now it is clear that the zinc half cell will undergo <coughs> reduction. Then our aluminium half cell will undergo oxidation. Remember, an ox red cat. So the one undergoing oxidation will be called the anode, and the one undergoing reduction will be called the cathode. So we can either use our standard reduction potential values the question has given us, or we could also use the electrochemical series to determine which of the substances is going to be the cathode and which one is going to be the anode. Let's try and construct our feasible electrochemical cell. We need an overall equation over here. And what are we going to do? What we are going to do is we are going to write the reaction at the cathode and the reaction at the anode. So at the cathode, we have reduction. That means the oxidation number of zinc has to reduce in the course of the reaction. So we have Zn2 plus, then we are supposed to form Zn. That means it is accepting two electrons. At the anode, we are supposed to write our oxidation reaction. Now, if we start with aluminium three and end up with aluminium, we are still writing the reduction reaction. But we, are, we need a what? Oxidation reaction. So we are going to write the aluminium first, solid which will then lose three electrons to form aluminium three plus. So the oxidation number has now increased from zero to positive three. That is our reaction at the anode. Let's write it appropriately. Eh? So aluminium going to Al3 plus aqueous plus three <coughs> electrons. You realize in the cathodic reaction, we have two electrons. In the anodic reaction, we have three electrons. We can't just sum up the two equations. Remember, we have to make sure the number of electrons on both sides become the same. And this we can do by multiplying the cathodic reaction by three. Then we are going to get three Zn2 plus plus three times two, six electrons to produce 
3 times Zn, 3 Zn. Then our anodic reaction, we are going to multiply by 2, so that the electron should become 6. So 2 times the aluminium plus, or go, sorry, going to produce 2 times the aluminium ion plus 2 times the 3 electrons, that will give us 6 electrons. Now since the electrons are now the same on both sides, we can add the two equations together. So adding them together, we are going to get 3Zn2 plus plus 6 electrons plus 2Al going to produce 3Zn plus Al3 plus plus 6 electrons. So the electrons are going to cancel out and our overall equation becomes 3Zn2 plus plus 2Al going to produce 3Zn plus Al. Oh, sorry, we didn't multiply this one by 2, right? Uh -huh. 2. So we have plus 2 aluminium ions. This becomes the overall equation of the galvanic cell we have set up. Remember, with the galvanic cell we are setting up, zinc half cell becomes our cathode and our aluminium half cell becomes our anode. The next thing is to calculate the EMF of the entire cell. And we said the EMF is giving us the standard reduction potential of the cathode minus the standard reduction potential of the anode. And from the question, we were given the standard reduction potential of the cathode, which is the zinc half cell, to be negative 0 0.76 volts minus that of the anode, which is the aluminium half cell, which we are giving as negative 1.66 volts. When we add them together, we are going to get positive 0 0.90 volts. So we've constructed a feasible galvanic cell using these two half cells. More importantly, we've been able to analyze and figure out which one is going to be the cathode, which one is going to be the anode, and the overall reaction. And based on the standard reduction potential values we are given, we have been able to calculate the total EMF of the whole galvanic cell setup. So this is the part where we talked about as the use of the standard electrode potential values that it can be used to calculate the EMF of the whole cell and the EMF of this whole cell that we are going to set up is supposed to give us positive 0 0.90 volts. Now we know the zinc half cell is our cathode then our aluminium half cell is our anode. Let's use that information together with the EMF of the cell to construct our galvanic cell. So this becomes our galvanic cell. At the left compartment, we have our aluminium strip in one molar aluminium ion solution. In the second compartment, we have our zinc metal inside one molar zinc 2 plus ion solution. We fix our salt bridge, then we connect a wire to the voltmeter from the aluminium to the zinc electrode. And what is going to happen? We are going to record an EMF of positive 0 0.90 volts. Electrons are going to move from the aluminium to 
the zinc compartment. But remember, zinc is a metal, it doesn't need the electrons. So the zinc two plus ions over here will move towards the zinc metal to pick up the electrons and form zinc metal. So this is the construction of our galvanic cell using that piece of information that we were given. In our video to follow, we'll be talking about another important use of the standard electrode potential values. Thank you.